Hello everyone. Good morning. First of all, warm welcome to OAC training by Unogeeks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a throw new fault option and a rethrow fault options available in error handling in OAC. Okay, so yes, you can explicitly erase faults within an integration flow with the help of throw new fault. And you can also rethrow the fault back to a parent scope or to the global level fault handler in case you want to do it with the help of rethrow fault, fault option. Let's, let's see how you can use these two options within an integration flow. And we'll make use of the error handling REST API that we've created uh, four videos before this. And uh, we'll, we'll explore how to use these two actions. Okay, so let's log into OIC instance. And we have built this REST API, just a brief recap. We have built this REST API, which will take a number as an input. It multiplies it uh, with itself, multiplies the number with itself, and uh, sends it back as a response here. In the mapper, we are doing that multiplication. And initially, if, we, if, if you build this API without a scope level fault handler and global level fault handler, a client will receive an uh, internal server error in case you pass in an invalid number. And to handle it, we have defined a global level fault handler first. And when we tested the API with invalid number, global fault handler handled it. And in the previous video, I've shown you how to configure a scope level fault handler. And when you have a scope level fault handler defined, the exception or the fault got handled at the scope level itself. Okay. So in this video, we're going to see how to throw a new fault explicitly from an integration flow. So to do that, you go into this actions tab, scroll down, and you see you see an option called throw new fault. So let's add in this throw new fault uh, throw new fault action, and let's say throw invalid number error if input is not a number or we'll we'll keep it a simple we'll just call it throw invalid number error if the number that is passed is an invalid one okay so we'll say if applicable create and whenever you throw a uh, throw a new fault a new uh, throw new fault you can uh, define a code, assign a reason and a details to it. And you can also mention a skip condition. So in the code, I will, I'll just say that it's an invalid number fault, invalid number fault, validate. And you can probably use, uh, yeah, you can enter a reason can say invalid number passed as input and you can probably assign the same one as a detail and you can mention a skip condition here this will determine whether this fault has to be explicitly raised or not so what are we doing here? We are throwing a new fault, raising a fault explicitly within the integration. And when do you want to do it? Or when they should fall, when, uh, when to skip uh, this, this, this uh, a new fault throw can be controlled with the help of skip condition. So in the skip condition, I'll, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just put in a condition. So I'll just verify whether the number is an integer or not. So I'll search for integer function. I'll drop it in there. It accepts an argument. And I pass in input number as an argument. OK. And I will verify if that number is equal to the input number. So when I try to convert a number into an integer, when, it, when this function gets executed, an error gets raised in case the number that is passed is a not a valid integer. If it is a valid integer, this condition becomes true. So a number uh, is a valid one, it's a valid number. So in such cases, the fault uh, will not be thrown. So this fault will not be raised, invalid number fault. Okay, so 
in in short, I'm just validating whether the number is valid or not. If it's not a valid one, raise this fault. Else, don't raise this fault. As soon as simple as that. Validate it and close. And this will raise a fault if the number is not a valid one. And here we are multiplying the number with itself and we are sending the response back here. And let's go ahead and test this. And what's the expectation? If we pass in an invalid number, this fault should be raised. And that fault should be handled by the scope level fault handler. And from the scope level fault handler or in the scope level fault handler, let's make one small change. Instead of sending in a hard coded message, so what we do is we capture the error code from the fault object. So if you look at the, the result, let me delete the target node and let me recreate it. Earlier we were sending in a hard coded text, right? But now I don't want to do it. Instead, I want to pass in a message like this. I'll still say a scope level fault handler to indicate that the error is handled by the scope level fault handler. And in the second string, error occurred in main scope. So I'll just say a following error occurred in main scope. And I'll put a space of maybe hyphen. And here, I will not put in a static text. Instead, I will capture the fault error code from the fault object. So when you are in the fault uh, fault uh, fault handler, you get access to the fault object. Okay, drag and drop the error code. Okay, and save it. So you should see a message which says a scope level fault handler occurred, and and the error is, error that you need to see is invalid number so you copy this for some reason uh, we're, we're getting this a uh, weird error so let me just close this discard okay just i think i probably used a concat with uh, init uh, init caps i'll probably have to change that Expression, this changes to small c, validate it. Okay, validate the mapping. So we are printing the error message of fault from a uh, fault error code from the scope level fault handler. So since we are uh, throwing an explicit fault here, that uh, error that error code that you have assigned here, invalid number fault, uh, this is this is the one that you should see in the error message going back to client. Okay, a fault should get raised here. It should be handled by the fault handler and in the fault handler, invalid number fault should go back to the client. Let's go ahead and test this API now. Activate the API. Test it and test it with an uh, test it with a valid number first. And when you test it with a valid number, the fault doesn't get raised because we remember we mentioned a skip condition. Uh, and since since that skip condition is true because uh, this is a valid integer, so the a fault is not raised. So this throw invalid number error if applicable. This is it's not applicable in this case since it's a valid number. So it it went ahead with the normal processing. And let's change this now uh, to an invalid number and test it. What happened now? Now, since this is not a valid number, uh, uh, an explicit fault has been thrown by the, by the throw new fault option that we used. And a scope level fault handler, main scope fault handler handled it. And it has sent that message back. Okay, so you see the scope level fault handler and the message is coming back to us. Okay, so it's, it says it's a runtime exception. 
uh, probably I think I think it did print a, a fault object uh, error code exactly, but that's okay. But this is how you can throw a valid uh, throw explicit false and you can handle them in the scope level fault handler. And if you want, uh, so here we handle the fault at a scope level, right? Instead, for whatever reason, if you don't want to handle a fault here, you can rethrow it uh, back to the global level fault handler. Okay, so the way you do it is go back to the API, deactivate it. If for whatever reason uh, you don't want to handle the fault at a scope level, you can throw it back to the parent scope. Remember, you can have nested scopes, right? You can throw it back to the parent scope. You can rethrow the fault basically. And if it is a nested scope, it will be thrown back to the parent scope. If it is a main scope, then it will be thrown back to the global fault handler. How do you rethrow a fault? Fall back, go to fault handler. And I don't want to handle the fault here. I don't want to send the response back to client. Instead, I'll delete this. And I will also delete this. And I want to rethrow the fault back. So you can perform some actions and then rethrow the fault back. So uh, if you scroll down, you can rethrow the fault back. And when you rethrow the fault back uh, from a scope level fault handler, if it is outermost scope, it will go to the global fault handler. Let's test this. So this throw new fault raises a fault in case it's not a valid number. It goes to the scope level fault handler, but in the scope level fault handler, we, we just have a retro fault option. So this will throw the fault back to global fault handler and the global fault handler should handle it. And in the global fault handler, what are we doing? We are sending an uh, appropriate error message back to the client. Okay, so the expectation is that if it is the API now with an invalid number, you should see the uh, uh, see the message from a global fault handler. Activate the API. And test it. Test it with an invalid number. And you see the message coming from global fault handler. Okay, so uh, an throw new fault has thrown an exception. It went into the scope level fault handler, but in the scope level fault handler, all we have done is rethrow fault. But before rethrowing the fault, you can execute a set of actions if you want. And that's what uh, we normally do in real time. We execute some actions that we want to perform and throw the back, fault back to a parent scope so that we can do something else in a parent scope as well as required uh, by the use case. And since the, the fault is thrown from main scope, uh, there's no other scope around the main scope. So it went to global fault handler. And in the global fault handler, we have assigned this message and sent it back to the client. Okay, so this is how uh, you can use a throw new fault to explicitly raise a fault. And you can also mention a skip condition that, uh, that helps you quite a bit. And you can also rethrow a fault. Okay, in the next video, I'll show you how to use a Twitter adapter in OIC. Yes, you heard it right. You can all you can use Twitter adapter to to do n number of things in tweet in your Twitter account from OIC. For example, you can tweet a message, you can retweet it, you can you can find the trending topics about a particular place. So I'll show you how to do all of it in the next uh, set of videos. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Uh, in case you are interested in Oracle Integration Cloud training offered by Unogix. Know please call us on this number or send a WhatsApp message 73960 or you can send us an email as well if you want. Thank you.